Welcome to the Travel Like a Boss podcast, the radio show all about traveling like a boss by being your own boss. Stay tuned for weekly interviews featuring guests that have built their own online businesses. If you would like to have access to our entire back catalog, visit travellikeabosspodcast.com for instant access. And here's your host, Johnny FD. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Johnny, and welcome to episode 134 of the Travel Like a Boss podcast with Ernest Epps. Welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Glad to be part of the show this week. And where are we at right now? We are in Kona, Hawaii. Woo! Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> oh, we didn't even, talk, we didn't even <laughs> practice that. That was awesome. No, that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So I was talking to Ernest down at the gym. We, were just, we got done working out. We are both trying to get back in shape. <laughs> and Absolutely. We were, I was, he was kind of sharing with me his journey, and I thought it was. I was like, you know what? We got to stop. We got we got to go upstairs and record this because it's it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's been quite the journey since I've been able to uh, join the Dropship Lifestyle Program. Learned about it, doing a little bit of research about a year ago. Um, you know, specifically from Johnny uh, talking about it online, and it's been truly a blessing in my life. Uh, to be able to take advantage of all the opportunities and gateways is open. But all right, let's let's kind of rewind though. So you're working a corporate job before, right? Yep. Yeah, I was a human resource manager uh, for a uh, small franchise company in my in my area. Okay. And so so tell me about like the the corporate ladder. Like, what was that like? Oh man, it was it was pretty insane. You know, um, I spent a good portion of my time prior to the last job I had uh, really like committed to the to the corporate ladder, climbing up the ladder. Uh, a lot of time away from my family, flying all over the country, building a pretty large sales team uh, for a marketing firm I was working for, and you know, uh, was starting to have you know a significant amount more money, but uh, literally no time. So I met this this dude uh, at LAX. I'm, I'm actually writing a blog post about right now, so it might be up on johnnyfd.com by the time you guys hear this, but I was in the hot tub, the Sheraton Hotel, nice place, and I was talking to this guy. Uh, he was a director for Deloitte and Touche, big consulting company, and he he has like he had like my dream job. You know, he was telling me that he gets to fly, you know, travel around, flies business class, stays in these four star hotels, all expenses paid. Gets gets a corporate card. He gets to expense everything. Uh, that was kind of like your life before, right? Yeah, no, that that was where I was at, man. Uh, they didn't necessarily pay for business class, but <laughs> uh, I got to fly all over the country, literally up and down the East Coast. Um, I got to the point where literally I was building so much of the company's business. They were flying people to where wherever I was at the time, and I was literally training all the. Uh, sales managers across the country it was uh it's really it's really awesome at the time you know i thought but you know at the same time like the time and the and the money just wasn't really making a whole lot of sense but yeah i had a company card i had a gas allowance car allowance i had a company expense card i had a, a cell phone allowance it was pretty much you know it was, a, it was a life you would dream of from a corporate perspective it's a dream right <laughs> when i worked for honeywell out of college i had i, I was promised um a company card it was supposed to be an impala I was so excited, you know. I, I don't know why. Like, I, th- I think now, if you gave me, even if you gave me a Paul, I wouldn't want it. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I can get a free car. That sounds crazy. I, you know, they paid for my cell phone bill. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my company credit card that I was only really able to use if I was on a company trip. And the only place they ever sent me was Minnesota, <laughs> and it was always during the winter. <laughs> wow, because <laughs> that's where Honeywell's um, corporate office is. But I was so excited. I was like, what? I get a twenty five dollar, you know, allowance. Per diem. Yeah, per diem. I was like, oh, this is so cool. So I would order like two meals and try to try to hit that twenty five dollar mark. <laughs> and I hanging out with this guy in the hot tub. About you know, he was telling me about his life, and I was like, man, you know what? Maybe you know, maybe like that's the path I should have went on because his job is exactly what I would want to do. He's a consultant for big companies like Toyota and other car manufacturers, and he actually does all the marketing for them. So he'll go in and kind of uh, figure out like, okay, this new car is coming out. How should we, you know, like, you know, what demographics should we target? What kind of, you know, what kind of uh, ads should we do? And that sounds fun to me. You know, like that actually sounds really cool. And I think that's a big reason why he, he, you know, he does it is because he feels like he's really like, he could see the commercial come out. He can be like, yeah, I can see, you know, this is like a national thing and all the perks and all the money which was a lot. He he like he wouldn't like he didn't mention specifically how much it was. Um, he said you know he mentioned it was definitely over six figures, 
And then I went on glassdoor.com and I looked it up. <laughs> and it was like something like 299000 <laughs> Wow. Which is a lot of money. You know, and he gets all these benefits. But the two things about it really got to me. And I think this is kind of what a lot of people in the corporate world, uh, you know, say. And the first, you mentioned downstairs, you're all traveling. You, never, you don't have time to see your family. Yeah, no. Um, I know one of the questions you just recently asked is uh, me and my fiance were engaged. I uh, have four kids. And uh, specifically, when I was working with that company, um, you know, we, we wound up having my oldest son, Jeremiah, and then uh, my other son, Zachariah. And um, literally, uh, I was in the hospital room. On, I was like pretty much kind of like not necessarily forced to be on conference calls, but it was kind of like you had to be on these calls and you had to submit payroll and you had to uh, still handle all the operations for the business because pretty much at the level where I was, you know, the buck kind of stopped with me and business had to keep going. Um, and if it didn't, uh, <laughs> there were kind of some repercussions. So like literally like in the, in the hospital, like my, my fiance, she delivered my son, Jeremiah, and I'm sitting there on conference calls and it, it was pretty insane. So, you know, it's been uh, one of the prohibiting things early on, like, you know, we were having kids and stuff where, you know, I just, it, there was like, no like real room to even have anything of that nature at that time so man that is insane if i was having a kid and my boss said hey you got to be on this call i would say fuck you <laughs> i like i would literally be like fuck you i ain't you know i'm having a kid you know don't mm -hmm. bother me you know and i think and it sucks you know i i understand from their point of view why they need you because mm -hmm. everything's kind of this bureaucracy everything's kind of you know there's all these moving parts yep but I, I wouldn't I would not want to do that. Yeah, no, it was it was a really uh really rough environment, you know, at the organization I worked for, you know. At the time, like, you know, I was I was a little bit younger. Um you know, so, you know, being kind of young and like having an opportunity of that nature, like, again, like, you know, that's the dream. Like, that's where people look to get to like 20 years down the road. And I was like 22, 23, you know, granted with that type of opportunity. So that's crazy. How, can I ask how much you were making then? Yeah, I was making like close to six figures, you know, yeah, but a part yeah. of that, too, is they were taking advantage of me because of my age. Um, so I, so myself and like other people, um, you know, with, with the organization, they were kind of pinching pennies, uh, to kind of get us to do stuff that, you know, you would get paid a lot more at another company. But personally, again, cause I'm like 22, 23, like, you know, you look at like 60, 70, $80,000 at 22 years old, like, man, you're a baller. <laughs> so, you know, some people don't even get there in their career. Like my, my mom, at, you know, working um, with, uh, EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commissions, uh, she's been there for like 30, 35 years and she's not even making that much money you know she's got the degree she's been there for an extremely long time so you know at the time like i'm looking at like whatever they were giving me i was like yeah i'll take it um but not really looking at like the long-term picture like how much like i should have been getting paid um but at the same time like just being grateful at that time because it was just for me it was a lot of money at, at my age absolutely <laughs> i believe a lot of people listening to this right now are like like, they're like yeah i would have taken that mm -hmm. but it's not like what what expense, right? Like what cost? Mm -hmm. So the director of marketing for Dula and Touche, he was talking about you know how you know we kind of basically just comparing lives. We were hanging on the hot tub for like two hours, something crazy. And at first, you know, he was kind of telling me how great his life was, and then he was telling me about his kids. Um, and the first kind of red flag that made me realize maybe his life is not as great as I, I you know, he had envisioned or I envisioned is he said he travels Monday through Friday. So he never actually flies back home until weekends. And that his, his like, yeah, I think his son and daughter, but his daughter, you know, she's like 10 or something, is doing piano. And she didn't want him to go to his last recital. And at first he was like, you know, like, what do you mean? You know, like, why don't you want me to go? And, you know, she wouldn't, you know, she like wouldn't tell him. She like told her mom, said, you know, I feel like the pressure of dad's there you know because she wants to be perfect you know in front of him because she never sees them so when she does she wants to like impress him and everything be perfect and with her it's fine because she sees you know her practicing all the time that you know so the mom's always there she you know sees her messing up it's not a big deal but because the dad's not there to see her learning and growing and practicing it's like this big pressure you know where she's like i, I don't want I, I can't perform if he's there and to me i was like man that like logically you understand it but that sucks you know like yeah no that's terrible actually uh i remember when um they wanted me to go up to uh rhode island to uh to launch um a sales team up there and um that was actually part of our launch program for that year and apparently we were behind for the client 
And so literally I, I remember exactly where I was. I was at a, I was at a Chick-fil-A, uh, on route three in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That's where I, where I live at. And, um, I got the phone call. My supervisor called me. He was just like, Hey, you know, uh, how, how's it going up in Rhode Island? And, and he kind of already knew the answer to the question. Like, look, man, you know, things going great in South Carolina, North Carolina, you know, Virginia's rocking, Maryland's doing well. Um, and he was just like, yeah, well, um, we're going to need you to, uh, to go to Rhode Island tomorrow. And I said, what he's like uh yeah you're gonna have to go to rhode island tomorrow and i was just like all right well you know i actually have some things planned like family wise and stuff like that he said well uh what's well, pretty much you know we promised the client we'd be up in rhode island and massachusetts um so um you know if, if you can't make it tomorrow uh you know you can use your imagination <laughs> Man, all you know that corporate bs when they say stuff like that it like it pisses me off you know i'm like and a lot of it what pisses me off more than anything else is how like people don't like pre-plan stuff and it ends up just being more work than it is i would estimate that more than half of the actual work done in corporation is just is just like not even necessary yeah it's pretty much you spend spend a bunch of time putting out fires you know and some fires can be definitely uh preventative in nature you know um and that one was crazy because i actually wound up spending man i think it was like three weeks in rhode island in massachusetts like completely unexpected not in my game plan like anything i had was pretty much done and i was camped out in a hotel <laughs> for for the next few weeks i would hate that and you know what and regardless if you're making 300 grand a year as a director or if you're like a, even i don't know like some, some, some you know some low-paying jobs you end up like having a like for example even like a, let's say a teacher right you work you know monday through friday let's say it's nine to five they say right really it's eight to five and then you got to go home and you have to prepare for the next day on the weekends you're preparing for monday so you're not actually working you know nine to five you know mm-hmm. you're not working five days a week four hours a week you're working so much more. And I think to me, that would piss me off more than anything else. You know, I would, if I had to work a job and it was nine to five and during those hours, I would crush it. I would work hard. I'd be okay with that, to be honest. Yeah. You know, but if I had to go home on weekends and, and this guy, that's what he was complaining about saying that the worst isn't the fact that he's traveling Monday through Friday. And, and by traveling, it's not like he's, you know, waking up at, you know, nine you know nine a.m and going you know and going you know leisurely going to the airport having breakfast he has to wake up at like 4 30 in the morning sometimes to catch the early morning flight to get to you know wherever it is yep uh <laughs> for a meeting and then sometimes that same night he has to fly back out again mm-hmm. no absolutely now my phone was constantly going off like all the time so even like when i'm out at dinner with like my fiance like it'd be constantly dinging all the time like because i was responsible pretty much like you know i built up a sales team where it was like um fluctuating between like 120 150 people and then i had like nine sales managers that all reported directly to me and if anything happened like i was the point of contact <laughs> yeah, that's insane so yeah so I think we can both agree, and we can you know we could probably talk about this the whole hour, but yeah, <laughs> even though the money that you can make in a corporation and the benefits you get, you know, with the expense accounts, the corporate car, the cell phone, all that allowance and all that sounds great on paper, like it's not worth it. No, it definitely isn't. Like you literally like. It, it, it definitely isn't worth it. Like, you know, just talking from like personal experience, like it's so much better to, to have your time. Cause even here, like, um, you know, being in Hawaii, like I, I got the privilege of, uh, meeting a lady who she, she works directly with the CEO of Cox communications. And she said, you know, she makes a strong six figure. Um, but she said the thing that hurts her the most is that she has absolutely no time to spend with her family. So literally when she has to travel for corporate stuff, uh, the only time she could spend with her kids is she has to spend, she has to fly them out with her. That's the only time they get to spend together. So even then she's really kind of working, but it's more so like they're at least there so they can see mom. Man, I, I can't imagine that. And I think for a woman, that's even harder, you know, like for men, I feel like, I guess like emotionally we can be like, all right, let's work during the day and then let's go see our kids on the weekend or, you know, for an hour after work. But for, I can't even imagine for, for, for a woman, like I, I feel like their bond is even stronger they, they need that mm-hmm. that family time even more 
know. Yeah, no, and that's what she values the most out of, you know, coming to an event like this and getting around, you know, people that have been able to, um, you know, really be successful building like a location independent business is like, you know, what are they doing and how they're able to do it? Because I just want my time back. I just want my really like in it. What I'm like thinking in my heart is just like, you know, I just want my family back, you know, because you really don't have like any type of time or anything to be able to do with your family. You're telling me the only time you can spend is, you know, having them fly out with you. And she said, it's, it's great that she has the option. Cause honestly, she's just like at the, at the level of revenue she's making, it's just like, I'm unaffected about paying for it myself even sometimes. Um, but it's just that she just has no time. Well, what's actually really cool is how many families are out this, at this retreat. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually really shocked, man. There's a lot of families that, you know, they brought, you know, wife, kids, you know, uh, myself included. I got an opportunity to bring my fiance out with me. It's the first time she's been able to really travel um, on any type of excursion. So she's been really excited to come out. So, yeah, I feel like it's a lot more like, you know, kind of like a family uh, type of engagement for this year. I think I mean, maybe because coming to Hawaii is a little bit easier than flying out to Asia, especially with kids. Uh, but what's his name? Who, who's the guy that lived in like Nicaragua with his family? He's here again. Uh, uh, is it Isaac, I believe? No, uh, Isaac lives in like Portland or something. But yeah, Isaac was came out with, with, with him, his wife and his kids. That was cool. Yeah. But then he's had this other guy. You know, he flew out to Asia last year with his, his kids and his wife, which is crazy. Uh, but I think Hawaii is a little bit easier, especially if you're living on like the West Coast. But it's still cool, like kind of seeing that not everybody, you know, wants to do what I do and just kind of just travel around uh, and just go, you know, party around <laughs> like in <laughs> Eastern Europe, or whatever. <laughs> but I think by having that freedom of having the online income and I kind of own your own business, you can have that choice. Absolutely. No, I think, uh, you know, it really comes down to the choice because honestly, for me, like when I first got started, like seriously in my online journey uh, within this last year, it was really just to make a couple hundred bucks. Like I wasn't even looking at the long term like goal of making, you know, uh, enough money to replace my job and to have fun to be able to travel and go to different events and stuff. Uh, it was just really, you know, about just, you know, making a little extra money. But you know, as as it starts to come in, you know, you, in a sense, you kind of get a little bit greedy. Like, what else can I do? Like, you know, I think it's greedy. It's almost like your like opportunities open up. And you're like, well, I didn't know that was possible. Do, mm-hmm. do you remember what like what your goals were before? Oh, absolutely. Like literally. Oh, man, I wish I had my notebook with me. I literally have my green notebook where I literally took all my notes when I originally started Dropship Lifestyle, like my original niche ideas, like everything in like this green notebook. And like literally it was like make one sale that was like the first make one sale then it was just like make three sales then it was like make five sales and then it was just like make three thousand dollars a month and i actually wound up doing all that within my first 30 days <laughs> that's insane yeah i remember you, you told me that because for most people it takes about two months to make their first sale like what what like t- can you tell me like how, actually how, so how'd you find out John's course and what made you do it and like what was that process like Oh man, it was actually hilarious because I was not searching for his course or anything at all. So um, you're on Pornhub looking around, <laughs> and then what, what, what did you see? No, I was actually it, it was a, a Facebook ad that actually popped up in my news feed. I I was like actually like walking out of my bathroom um, at home, and like I remember it very vividly because like this literally was like the changing point in my life here recently. Um, you know, I didn't know it was going to lead to that, but yeah, I seen a Facebook ad. It was actually, you know, pretty targeted because it was like a black guy and I'm an African American guy and he was talking about his success with You're the black? program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only in Hawaii. <laughs> I thought you were just tan. <laughs> Yeah, so um, it was an African American guy on the video talking about his success with like you know this drop shipping program and running an e- e- uh, e-commerce store online, and I was just like, oh man, here's another one of those scam things, you know, <laughs> like I'm, you're not getting my money this time. And uh, but I was very curious because obviously, like we're cu- curious by nature when we hear stuff like that as humans, and especially like when you're in the corporate grind and like you really don't want to be there. Um, so I just started doing a little bit more digging. I wound up finding your blog. Um, you know, reading some information from you and just doing, doing my due diligence. And I just really felt like it was really genuine and especially like, you know, hearing about your story, you know, starting with like 200 bucks and now you're just like absolutely just crushing it, drop shipping and diversifying online. So I was just like, all right, after, after doing my due diligence for two months, cause that's how long it took me before I made a decision. Um, I just went on and just dived in. Were you still working your corporate job then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now I was still working, uh, my full time job and 
Um, literally, like, you know, when I signed up, I told myself, like, cause the, the difference between this and everything else, because I had been trying to figure out the whole online thing for quite some time. Like, you know, like most people, like, you're trying this program, poking at that program and, like, you know, not really having success in most cases. And that's where I was. Like, I literally spent probably 10 or 15 grand on other programs and stuff and yeah, had no crazy. success. Really? <laughs> yeah. Right. What, what were they? <laughs> Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to drop bombs on other stuff. So. <laughs> no, man, I don't want to drop bombs on other programs, but I just had no success. Um, all right. And, all right so l- 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 let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. Um, why do you think they were, like, why do you think those didn't work? Was it like the system itself didn't work? They wanted like too many other, like, you know, bull crap inside of it. Like, what is it? Actually, it was, it was a combination of actually both those things. And then also I had to, you know, be straight up. It was me a little bit too, as well. Um, but you know, like one of the things, like, like you had just mentioned, like with the upsells, like you get in and like, you're supposed to get like this. And then the next thing you know, you got to pay a couple hundred dollars for that. And then you get to the next tier and you got to pay for that. And then by that time, like, you're like, Man, like, how much stuff do I need to pay? Can I even get started with a website? <laughs> I, so that that is the number one reason why I hate most of the courses out there is because they get you in low. They get you in for like you know they're like oh yeah it's forty nine bucks or something forty nine bucks a month, mm-hmm. and then you get in they're like all right well now you need this like private blog generator you know <laughs> or you need this like whatever you know um this this tool or this whatever it is and I'm like if or you gotta pay like you know five grand in the back end to get to the next level or something and that stuff pisses me off you know i really believe that if i was going to buy something i want to be able to do a hundred percent of it you know pretty much for that for that amount of money you yeah. know or you know if i you know like if i have to pay for like web hosting or whatever that's just normal expenses yeah, that's or normal. ads you know but i don't want that person that sold me the course to be like all right well now you got to buy this because to me that that feels shady you mm-hmm. know, especially if there's no way for that to work without that, or they didn't tell me up front that that was an option. Absolutely. No, I feel the same exact way. So I went through the the horror story of like, you know, paying for like thousands of dollars worth of stuff and not having any success with it at all, you know, and uh, that's the thing I really, really appreciated. Like when I first signed up with Anton's program, cause you know, looking from the outside, you know, based off of like the reviews and stuff, it seemed like it was a one time thing. And then like signing up, I was like, man, there's, there's no extra stuff. Like I'm like, all right, man, this dude's going to try to upsell me something at some point. And it was just like, no, like, like literally here's everything you need from like A to Z, like to get started to to start creating some success for yourself and i was just like holy smokes man this is this is phenomenal you know from the the content of just not having like and then just taking out all the fluff out of everything too like it's literally like here's what you need to do here's your action task go get it done and it's just like man that was just awesome so um literally like when i signed up i just i just promised myself all right this go around I'm just going to make sure I do everything that's recommended in the program. I said I wasn't going to be uh, I wasn't going to try to do anything my way because, you know, I think some people really get caught up in a lot of other things that they might have had or maybe you had a little bit of success in. So you you kind of want to do things your way. But I just said, you know what? I don't know anything. This dude's successful. He's he has a lot of other successful people. And that's the one thing I appreciated a lot about the program, because a lot of the gurus that are out there is just like, you know, they promote all their success. And then, like, you see, like, other people that are signing up for the program and you don't see anyone else being successful. And with Anton, it was just like there was not only successful people that he had helped like you, it was successful people people that that were new in the program that were creating success so like it was like people that had just signed up in the first 30 days first 90 days like making real money like posting screenshots and talking about their success and i was just like that like that's somebody i can follow like not not how successful you can be but how how can you help other people be successful and it was just like he he has it together i like it actually one of the the best things that he accidentally did was he created a Facebook group mm. because uh, the forums has always been there and that's super helpful for people to like ask questions or like you know post um, the progress. But then he also made a private Facebook group for members, and I think it's just because it's easier to take a screenshot because you're on your phone anyways, or it's kind of just like you know this quick you know status update. Everyone now like they post like <laughs> just made my first sale or just got my first thousand dollar sale or just had my first you know whatever it is or like this month I made this much. So it's almost like a place where people can kind of get you know. It's, it's almost like the same thing as like when you post something cool on Instagram say oh check out this food I ate or check out this whatever I ate 
and that motivates the crap out of everyone else. Oh my gosh, yeah, it, it definitely is. Like it, it's so amazing, like seeing that stuff, like from students right now. And personally, uh, I've had the privilege of now being a uh, coach uh, for the Dropship Lifestyle Program and seeing like the students that you help along the way. Like uh, one of the students, she recently posted like uh, she just had a sale and made nine hundred dollars in net profit, and she's like in her first full month of business, and it's just like she's already done over a thousand dollars net profit. And it's just like, wow, you know, to be able to see that. And it's consistent. Like, that's the thing I love about the program. Like, it's consistently people rolling into the program. Like, like you just talked about, just made my first thousand, like just made seven thousand dollars like this first full week. And it's just like, holy smokes. Like, it's it's so amazing. Like, real deal. That's crazy. <laughs> so you, you so you signed up and then so you, you were still working at the time, but then you started like you started your store right away or how, how did that work? Yeah. So I signed up. uh um, September 2nd, 2015. Um, and I launched my store by September 26, 2015. So, uh, literally like, you know, uh, with this type of program, like it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to be able to move through the different things that you need to do. Like you got to run the business like a business. And that's one of the things I teach about on uh, my coaching calls. And when I'm talking to people is like, if you run the business like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. But if you run the business like a business, it'll pay you like a business. Um, so I treated it like a business and literally I would wake up listening to Anton and I would listen to Anton at any opportunity that I had, like going through the different action tasks and me and my fiance, we were going to bed every night, listening to Anton, no weird stuff, but <laughs> oh, so, we so your li- wife was doing it with you or how no, she, she's, uh, no, she's far from like, you know, the computer stuff, like, you know, anything like she, you know, I have to check her email for, her, so she, she's not really like involved, but you know, she just, she just seen my commitment level to it. And it's actually kind of funny cause I never told her how much I paid for it when I first signed up. Would she have been pissed? If you oh, yeah, she would have been. Oh, like, man. she actually she was actually pissed, like, later down the road. But by that time, I was doing, like, eight ten thousand $10,000 a month in sales. Okay. And so-, so you would have made the money back <laughs> by the time she found out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was actually mad when I told when I told her how much I paid for it. She's like, "You did what?" And I was just like, "Yeah, but I'm making money." And she's just like, "Oh yeah, that's right." <laughs> so yeah, because most people they don't understand it. And like she she hasn't gotten into that thought process really the 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 entrepreneurial side. But um, you know, she's loving the fact that I'm crushing it. So at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. But um, but right. yeah. So how did you how did you get your store up and running that quickly? Because mo- for most people, it takes like two months on average. Like for, from everyone I, I've met in person. Uh, all the people I talked to online, I'm always just asking like, how long it take you to make your first sale? It's almost always two months. So how did you do it faster? Yeah, so I got my first sale within the first uh, 48 hours of launching my store. So uh, really like, you know, through the process of like those 24 days that it actually took me to launch, like to go through, you know, finding your niche, building your demo store, contacting suppliers, uploading products. Like I was just hungry. Like, I was just like every opportunity I had, there was, I was living, sleeping, eating, breathing dropship lifestyle. Um, cause pretty much like, I think, uh, the biggest thing for me was just that I was consuming the content, taking action on the content and just not playing with the business. Like I really wanted this to be a great second stream of income outside of what I was doing. So, uh, really like I went through all the training modules and then because obviously like I followed your story, I found different, uh, the older conference videos and stuff like that. Like people don't even know how much content is like on dropship lifestyle that literally like you can go and watch certain things and like just implement them and just, you know, be able to create some success for yourself. So literally I just done everything that the course recommended from like the optimization on your site to how you upload your products, the titles, the SEO stuff. Like I did all that. And when I started driving traffic, first sale came through in less than 48 hours. It, it shocked me. <laughs> That's crazy. But you still had that job then. What, what made you want it that bad? Man, just like, I just like, it, it was the pain of when I got laid off at the last company I was working for. Like it was Man, they hurt my feelings, man. Like, I had done so much for the company from a growth standpoint. They were making tons of money, um, and I got laid off. um, You know, since really I got fired. I ain't going to say laid off. I got fired. (laughs) So Why would they fire you? Man, it was just, like, a, a lot of corporate bureaucracy and stuff that was going on. And, you know, honestly, like, we had some gray area things that, 
you know, um, you know, had I kind of focused on maybe a different direction, like it could have put me in a better position. But but honestly, at the end of the day, like really like the culture there was that they didn't value people. And honestly, I knew that because they made me fire people all the time. I really didn't want to fire. But I just on like you get to that point where you really think you're bulletproof. Like when you when you really know that you're really good at what you're doing and you know you're making like, you know, the company's making tons of money what you're doing. You think you're bulletproof. Like I got a message. uh I think it was three weeks ago. I was down in Atlanta, you know, because I'm doing a little bit traveling now, too, uh, from a business perspective. And um, I had someone message me that's actually part of the Dropship Lifestyle Forum. He said, I just got fired. There goes $120,000 salary. Man, that's insane. I think a lot of people don't realize that they like that they're not bulletproof. You know what I mean? Like people think that having a corporate job is, you know, like a is like a safer alternative than trying to do your own business, but it's definitely not. Like I, I'm so I was on the scuba diving boat uh, two days ago and met met like a couple. <clears throat> they're retired. They're like fifty six or something. And he I, and you know I was like, oh yeah, you know, how's retired life? You know, what are you living off of? And he's like, oh, I got this great pension. And then I was like, oh, you know, like that's awesome. Like you know, do you have do you have other investments? He's like, no, 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 like I just had the pension. And I started thinking, I was like, man, you got fucking lucky because <laughs> there's a lot of people who they were supposed to get a pension, but it's gone. And if you had no other investments, no other savings. You are fucked. Yeah, no, that literally, like it, it's a terrible uh, environment that we're in nowadays, and you know that's what happened to that individual. Like, I was just shocked. I was just like, wow. You know, I was just like, I'm so glad, like, I took advantage of this business and this program, and that you know I put in the work to make it happen because you know that's one of the biggest things that I see, like working with a lot of different students that um, I've had the opportunity to. It's just so many people just aren't really wouldn't aren't willing to put in the work, and a lot of people actually sign up for the program and forget it's work. They're like, oh, I thought I was just going to build a store and just like money is just going to start falling in. I'm just like, no, you actually got to do work. You know, I, I honestly think that the reason why you were so successful is because you probably have that personality where as long as something works, you can you, you're willing to put in the effort, you know, like nobody can make like it doesn't matter how much hard work you put into something that doesn't work in the first place. Absolutely. But. If it's a system that actually works and it's laid out well and it has like the steps, someone with your type of personality is going to work hard towards it. Yep. And mm-hmm. I had a lot of strong whys too, like you said. Like when I worked at the last company, like I knew like I can't really like stick with the company. Like no matter how many perks they put out in front of you, because there was some things that I talked about with the supervisors that I was working with and even her supervisor where they talked about laying out a game plan for me to, me to be able to make $150,000 a year within the next 12 months. Um, you know, which most people are like, oh my gosh, $150,000, that's amazing. Where, like, I was already treading there with the last company I worked for. So it was just like, uh, you know, I don't want to go down that route. So just knowing that, like, wanting to be able to spend time with my family, be able to make decisions, buy my time back, wake up when I need to. And it just so happened that it was a blessing that I had built this business when I didn't need it to where I had it when I did. Because I actually just recently was in the hospital uh, for nine days. Um, and then after that, like, even in the recovery process, the, my doctor told me it's going to be a minimum of 10 days to really kind of turn things around. But while I was in the hospital, I made $11,000. That's insane, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like, I, I really, really, really believe that, like, by us having this, like, a, like this option, you know? I, I think that's kind of the best way to describe it, is to have our own options, have the freedom of, of time and money. Even, like, and even just kind of like the skills... To be able to do this again, you know, I really believe that, like, if I knock on wood, I don't want this to happen. But if I woke up tomorrow and I was broke, <laughs> and I had to do it all over again, I could, you know, because I have the skills to do it. I know the game plan. I know what it takes. I know how much hard, you know, how much dedication it takes, how much time it's going to take. I know, you know, I know how to like grind my teeth, and I'm willing to do it because I never want to be broke again. I never want to work for a job I hate again. I never want to work for a company that you know, doesn't treat me well, doesn't, doesn't appreciate me, you know, that doesn't give me the time or the freedom to, to be with, you know, like I don't even have a family right now, but it's even if I just want my own time or with friends or to do, to do things that, you know, make me happy and help and keep me healthy. I want to be able to do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree with that. I definitely think like, it's just like, like I said, building this, building this type of uh business model, you know, 
uh, to have it when you don't really need it. You know, if you're doing really well at what you're doing, like create an opportunity to, you know, have a store doing six figures outside of your full time job. Because honestly, to get to that point, like you can really put yourself in a position to be able to do that within your first few months. Because honestly, I wasn't even chasing that. And I hate to say that it kind of happened on accident, but it kind of did because I was just focusing on like the mechanics and mastering like the fundamentals of like your website and just continually tweaking tweaking uh you know the optimization and focusing on uploading products like the simple stuff and then like you know it's just amazing how you know when you go through the process like the course recommends like i tell people it to get to like three to five thousand dollars a month if you just follow the basics like of the program and like master like the content from a to z from what's covered like you can literally get to three to five thousand now to get past that you're definitely going to have to do a little bit more learning um i know you made some recommendations to me in like the forum like as far as like you know continue to progress and and grow and some things to actually be able to do that which is awesome um but yeah you know just be able to create yourself that additional option because you never know what's going to happen these days and like the security that you think is there really isn't yeah a hundred percent i definitely agree with that uh that's actually a big reason why i started the second podcast invest like a boss it's because i know that if you are not taking control of your own retirement it's there's a good chance it's not gonna be there you know just like if you don't take control of your own business and having you know, your own sources of income there's a very good chance that's not gonna be there either and Right now, people forget this is actually the best. We're actually like in a good time in the U.S. Oh yeah, where you know they're <laughs> you know uh, unemployment is actually pretty low. Uh, there's a lot of money. Real estate's going well, but it's not gonna go up forever. You know, like there's always gonna be ups and downs. And I almost feel like what we're doing is we're preparing ourselves for the next big downturn. You know, whatever that happens. And, you know, maybe it never happened. Hopefully, it doesn't. You know, right? Mm-hmm. But chances are, you know, if history repeats itself, it's you know there's gonna be a big downturn in the economy. Tons of layoffs again, um, you know, huge unemployment, pensions are going to be, you know, are gone. And for us, I don't even think it's going to affect us that much, to be honest. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, in the arena that we're in, like, especially like in the e-commerce arena, like, you know, the numbers from e-commerce are like just consistently going up. And it's, the craziest part is like the amount of money that's being spent, like in e-commerce is just a small fraction of like how much is still available in the marketplace. So like the opportunity of growth is just so immense. Um, it's just like, you know, that's why you see big companies like, you know, Amazon just come out of nowhere um, and just crush it like in our space because like there's just so much opportunity that's untapped and people love the convenience of shopping online. Like it's so crazy when I, I pulled up to like a Chick-fil-A not too long ago and uh, a lady was explaining to me because she had a little bit of time on her hands how her grandmother was just recently shopping on Amazon. She's like she never thought her grandmother would shop on Amazon because we were talking about, you know, e-commerce and, I was, and she was just like, man, it's crazy like the fact that, you you know now like you know more mature people like even my mom my mom's not even, my mom was never an online shopper but now she's like starting to shop online and it's just like the convenience factor and being able to offer yeah. people good deals and like and what we do with dropship lifestyle we're able to put our own spin on it and if you can find a way to add value to people compared to like the big box retailers like it's game over yeah i agree with that so did you have any like any hurdles or anything when you first started um, I guess I would say like the biggest hurdles was like handling the supplier relationship, like because I really didn't understand any of that stuff. Like when it came to like processing the order and you think an order went through when it really didn't and then you didn't follow up properly. So like the customer's thinking they're supposed to get it and it's not there. And so it was it was a lot of miscommunication, like, you know, and I could say it was the supplier's fault. But obviously me being new, taking personal responsibility, it was just a new person's fault, like not following up like with and making sure things are going well correctly. So that was one thing. And then, you know, obviously, you know, making sure that you're handling everything correctly with communicating with the customers. So I ran into like some customer service um, concerns, especially because I had launched like right around Christmas season. So I got hit with a ton of orders and I was just like, holy smokes, like what is going on? Like all these sales are coming through and I don't know what to do, you know, like communicating with the suppliers. So uh, that that was actually like, you know, the, the only challenge I really had, like, you know, in the beginning was just like that. And so you didn't um, have any trouble with like niche selection or like trying to get pl- uh, approved by suppliers or anything? Yeah, like that? I just followed the program, man. Like I hate, like I, I think some students like really sometimes like you know when we first start like the conversation about the mechanics and then we dive deeper into like some stuff that we can do to to really get past that knit selection because a lot of people get hung up there. But honestly, like I went through the process and the criteria that's required from the program. I made a decision and I didn't think about it. So some people ask me, you know, how did you feel about your niche? 
um, once you actually chose it. Because that's the next thing. Like, people will pick a niche, and then they get into their feelings. And I'm telling people, like, I didn't have time to feel. I don't know. I, I really didn't. I didn't feel anything because I, I said I picked a niche. What's the next step? That's smart. I, I, think, I, I think that's actually really smart. I, I thought my niche sucked. I wanted to move on. I was like, this one is terrible, you know, and um, like I had a friend who was doing, he was starting a, his store at the same time, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, his is the best niche, and I was like, <laughs> you know, if I, if I don't do that one, like, you know, mine's a waste of time now, Yeah, <laughs> and it's crazy because that's the store I ended up selling, you know, so it's made me, you know, I, th- I think in total, including the sale and also running it, that store made me like a, well over 150 grand, and I thought it sucked, <laughs> I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, because I see people pick some really good niches and, like, you know, they just quit too soon. I think a great example is, uh, you know, we got a great success story with Benny K from Ecom Fire where he bought a store from another student for really low and then wind up, you know, cashing out big time. And I'm just like, you know, just don't quit. Like, once you make that decision, stick to it. It's just most people, like, once they make that decision, they're not willing to consistently put in the work. And that, that's the other part, too, is, like, the consistency. Like, I was just super consistent, super committed, and I just kept at it and just didn't – I didn't look at any other options. I said, all right, I did this. Like, what's the next step? And then how do I get to that next step and then the next step? And that's pretty much, like, what it just came down to. So, yeah, I didn't have any hurdles there. And then with the supplier approval process, like, now I, I, cut, I did have a little bit of a background, like, dealing with, like, people at, like, a higher level. But, you know, as far as, like, knowing what to say, I didn't have that. So, literally, for me, I actually thought that was one of the best things about the course. Like, I think it's super undervalued. Like the like knowing what to say to talk to people because it's not really like you know uh, when when you kind of communicate with people at that level like you got to know what to say and how to say it to come across the right way so you got to choose your words carefully and so Anton covers a really great game plan um, of what to say and how to say it so you lead the supplier in the right direction for what you want to ultimately accomplish to actually get that agreement. So I, just, I actually haven't watched the, the new videos. I, I know he's he updates them all the time. Mm-hmm. So now does he give you like a good script like in the course? Yeah, it's a real it's a real good script. He covers exactly like literally like what to say, how to say it. And then, you know, personally, like 90 percent of what I say is based off of what he says. So when I'm working with students, I just send them exactly like what I say. And literally, like I have a conversation um, that was done through email and like you can see how I engage with the gold supplier, uh, which if people don't know what a gold supplier is, that's like a really high tier uh, type of supplier. Like they deal exclusively only with a few brands. It's actually hard to get an agreement with them. And so like I got an agreement with the supplier, like and it was all done through email. And you can literally like you can see like it's not fluff, like what's being told to you. Like you can see the real engagement. Like here's what I said. Here's how they responded. The reason why they responded that way is because of what I said. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of like the one of the biggest benefits of being in a course. Like, I honestly, I, sometimes I feel bad because I have like my personal friends or even like my, you know, like my cousins or something will be like, hey, you know, uh, can you teach me how to do this dropshipping thing? I'm like, yeah, but to be honest, like I would just take Anton's course because I'm at, you know, I'm happy to help you. But I don't, first off, I don't have like 80 hours to sit with you and show you how to do it. <laughs> Anton's already yep. recorded it, you know, a screen flow. And it's going to be better than what I'm going to like the way I'm going to explain it to you is not going to be as good as just watching someone actually do it. You know, you can rewind it, you can pause it, you can see the screen, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I've actually gotten that question a lot because like now, like, cause I'm, I'm like all over the place and like, people are like, you know, how do you have all this time? And like, how are you able to pay for this stuff? And I'm just like, you know, I run an online e-commerce store and like, you know, explain to them. They're just like, can you teach me? And I'm just like, well, the best thing is like, you need to check out this program. They're just like, well, you know, tell me more. Like, can I work with you directly? I'm just like, honestly, you couldn't afford to pay me how much you would actually pay if you just pay for the course because like the hourly rate that you would need to pay me because the value that I would give you like long term, you wouldn't be able to afford like like I'm not trying to be whatever, but it's just like that's just really what it is. Like I know you got a really solid hourly rate, which is 100 percent worth it. And, you know, if people need the extra value, like you'll definitely crush it with them. But it's just like you get everything you need A to Z. And then I tell people like the coaching that I can offer on top of that is just like something that's like, you know, to help you smooth out the rough edges or try to redefine something because it's not real clear for you. So right now I'm charging $175 an hour for my, my coaching. And 
even if someone said, okay, I, I want to pay for it, let me pay for 80 hours of it, I would I, honestly, I would just tell them no. Like, it, it sounds stupid because that's a lot of money. Like, I, I didn't even do the math on that, but it's <laughs> like, whatever it is, like, okay, let's do 80 times 175, right? Even if they said, Johnny, I'm going to give you $14,000 to walk me through this, I want 80 hours one on one coaching, I would say, no, that's stupid. Why are you going to pay me that when you can just sign up this freaking course and he can tell you everything I'm going to teach you, anyways? Mm-hmm. And he's probably going to do a better job. Because he's rehearsed it and he's like <laughs> gone through the system. And then, you know, and then maybe get like two hours with me at the end to yep. kind of, you know, or like, you know, or to, you know, like if you get stuck somewhere, you mm-hmm. know, like watch all the videos. And if you get stuck, then hop on the phone with me and then I'll help you through that part after you've understood the foundation. Yep. You know, as a, and actually, you know, I think that one of the coolest things that, that Anton's added now to the course is the coaching calls. Mm hmm. So, I, you know, so I think, so when I, when I signed up for the course like three years ago, there was no options. It was just like that, just the basic, it was, it was like eight videos or something. <laughs> and he would say, all right, well, this, you know, now it's time to call suppliers. So what you want to do is you want to call and you want to get approved. <laughs> all right, <laughs> next. <laughs> and I'm like, now wow. he like gives you the scripts, he walks you through. And then if you get stuck, you can have like a call with the coach. Uh, and there, how many are there now? Uh, six of us. Yeah. They can hop on the phone with Ernest or someone else who's... And he had a really stringent criteria. Do, do you remember what it was? It was something like you have to be making X amount of sales per, per month already. Yeah, you got to be doing course. at least $20,000 a month in sales. Um, you know, and then you actually got to... Ver- that's all verifiable. Like, you know, you got to send it over to him. He has to ask you to take a look at it. So you're on the phone with people that are doing like, you know, some really hardcore numbers. And every single one of us are all financially independent. So... You know, you're getting on the phone with like, you know, pretty much like someone that's extremely successful, um, you know, with their online businesses and someone that could literally like that's qualified to walk you through everything because they actually been through it. And not only have they been through it, they actually got real tracks for success. So like you could hop on a call with me or any other other coaches and literally like we could show you real screenshots and it's not anything that's like, you know you know, fluff or nothing. That's the awesome thing about the coaching program too, is because like you got qualified people that can mentor you through the process. And if you get stuck along the way, just hop on the call. And like you said, when I signed up, um, you know, the content was actually pretty good. It was still a little outdated. And like some people would, you know, you hear little things like here and there, like, oh, this video is old, but I'm just like, well, the content is still, you know, it's still the same. Like the process is still the same. It doesn't matter how many times Google updated, you know, so just go through the action task. But yeah, I just had, you know, we had the, uh, the modulated courses and then we also had just the private form. And now you got the private form that's blown up like crazy. You got the coaches, we got an ambassador program that Anton recently rolled out. So we got other qualified people that are doing well over six figures that now qualify to give advice. And so it's just like, you got all these layers and layers of like extra value so there's like literally no excuse and like you can see it from like the success rate from like when people when i started like that were getting results but it was mainly a lot of people that were getting results were like people that was hungry like me and hungry like you that just wanted it wanted and had the will to win but now you can help people that might not necessarily have that fire and will to win but they'll at least put in the work after you've made a recommendation and coaching, the coaching calls help hold people accountable by going through that process. And, you know, I used to, honestly, I used to kind of be like, well, you know what? If you can't do it on your own, then tough luck. <laughs> because I figured I did it on my own, right? And I wasn't the smartest guy in the world. I wasn't the most technical. So I knew it worked. I'm just like, well, you know what? That's just the way it is. You just got to grind your teeth and just do it. Because I knew you could do it because I met enough people who did do it. But now I think I have a little bit more compassion for people. And I realize, you know what? Some people really need their hand, hands held. It's not It's not that they're bad people. It's not that they're not willing to do the work. It's just that they really need that reassurance. Yep. You know? Um, and even things like the like the done for you packages now. I used to, be, I honestly, I used to be like, you know what? You don't need that. You know? Just fucking do it yourself, right? It's not that hard. Pick a template. You know? Learn some <laughs> basics. But now I realize I'm like, you know what? Some people really just suck at like, you know, any kind of web design. And because I've seen some sites that look so terrible. I'm like, how'd you make it look so bad? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and so for those people, they're like, you know what? Instead of me spending the th- first 30 days trying to figure out how to make the site look okay, let me just do the done for you package. And then let me focus on what I'm good at, you know? And that might be the customer service part of it or like, you know, just the, the you know, just the like the actual running the business. Yeah, even that done for you, like that that service has blown up immensely too. Like, and uh, I know Anton's sister Laura, she does a lot of um, you know, the designing and stuff like that, and she absolutely crushes it. Because I've literally, um, because the uh, 
you know, amount of calls and stuff, I've literally seen one student, well, two students rather, go into the same niche. And one store was designed by Laura. The other person designed the other store. Now, the person who designed the store by themselves, like, it was actually a good store. Like, honestly, like, because if someone has a bad store, I will definitely let them know. Um, and the, But the other store was designed by Laura, same niche. Like, they were driving about the same amount of traffic, spending the same amount of ads. One store was doing, like, two to $3,000, and the other store, literally, the guy's first 15 days did over $7,000 in sale. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. That was just like, wow. Like, like you talk about, like, does design make a difference? Yeah. It makes like, a huge difference. Just from a design sure. aspect. We're it not even talking does. about anything else, like offers, like anything of that nature, urgency, like conversion optimization. Like, we're just talking about from a design standpoint. That was the only difference. Because I've seen some of Laura's stores, and I remember thinking – this niche sucks. Like, this is something, like, I don't think anyone would buy. But because she designed the whole site to look like, she made it, basically, she made it look like hipster chic. You know? <laughs> if that's the best way designed. You know? Something that people were like, yeah, I want to buy this. This seems so cool. Yeah. And I think it makes a huge difference, you know? Versus just having it look like jcpenny.com. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I've seen her design a, another store here recently, too, where actually it's kind of funny because um, at the time when I signed up, Anton was directly still uh, helping out with the niche selection. And so he had recommended I not go into a, a certain niche. And just recently, as I was working with a student, they had their site designed by Laura, who actually went, they went into the niche, and they're actually doing pretty good so far. Like, they've made a couple thousand dollars in sales. And I think it was re it's really because of, like, how she designed the store. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. So... Okay. Actually, I have a question. So, mm -hmm. when like the students like call in, you know, to get a coaching call, mm -hmm. if they are in a niche that like other people are already in, like, is it your responsibility to be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that, or is it kind of like, well, that's you know, uh, it's it's a free market. Like, you're not gonna snitch someone out because then. <laughs> Then you're like kind of like giving away the first person's, you know, niche. How does that work? Yeah, so it depends on where people are at in the process. So, um, you know, the unique thing that I like to do as a coach um, is that, you know, I, I like to figure out where people are at in the process and based on where they're at, that's, you know, what we'll dis discuss outside of what they actually want to cover on the call. So if someone's already in a, in a niche already, they've already built their store, like they've already put in the work, like it's not my, not my job at that point to really say, hey, you know, forget your business, like you already got it registered, like you built a site, like don't do this because somebody else is doing it. So no, at that point, like I, my goal at that point is really to help them be as successful as possible based on where they're at. Because honestly, at the end of the day, literally, like if you look at niches, like when I look at a niche, I'm like, this is a multi-million dollar industry, like for these products specifically. So my job isn't to really get all the millions, it's just to carve out my piece of the pie. So if my piece of the pie is 150, 200,000, you know, there's like 10 million being spent in the niche, like, you know, that's just a small piece of the pie. So I think there's enough of the pie in all the niches available for people to be able to just carve out their own piece. Now, if someone's in the beginning of the process, uh, in this selection and they're they're considering going into a niche i do advise um that hey like you might not want to go into this niche because i've actually worked with a student that's actually in this niche um but even at that point like i don't i don't never when i'm on a coach call make a decision where you say you have to do something but i do make strong recommendations yeah so. I, I think that makes sense and if anything like if, if like if, if, when i'm doing niche research so, uh, so i'm about to start my program uh where i have 10 partners come up and we start stores together mm. And I was thinking about this. I was like, man, it's going to be kind of tough. Like, most people complain about trying to find one niche. <laughs> I got to find 10 <laughs> niches. So I think when I decided, I was like, you know what? I don't want to, like, I don't necessarily want to compete head to head with it, with other students because it's stupid. Because mm -hmm. that's like, to to me, I honestly think there's there's 100,000 niches out there that, <laughs> that, that, you know. Absolutely. Especially, like, after coaching and helping other people. All the time. I like I'll like I'll see this niche that's doing well that I never would have thought of in a million years. Mm -hmm. It's it's insane. I think like you know when people think kind of a um, scarcity mindset, they think oh man, there's only like ten out there. But when you think abundance, it's almost like kind of thinking like how many stars are out there, you know, in the universe. You know how yep. many star, you know how many pro t different products are there. Yeah, no, it's definitely like an immense amount of, <laughs> of niches that are out there. It's, it's so crazy because especially when I'm on like the niche selection calls, like I'll literally just like sit down and just walk through, walk someone through just like their bedroom and just ask them what's in their bedroom. And we just cover like literally like don't skip anything. Like what are you sitting on right now? Sitting on my bed. All right. Well, what is your bed? Like how does your bed put together? Oh, so you got a bed frame. You have a mattress. 
You have sheets. <laughs> So yeah, and what else is in your bed? You have a dresser. Like, how did you get your dress? You know, and just walking, literally, like you know, you'll have like ten niches like per room in your house if you really think about it. So yeah, there's definitely an abundance uh, of niche ideas and opportunities within the marketplace that people just is just untapped. And I know some people recently have asked me, especially like newer students, they're just like, man, if so many people are signing up for Dropship Lifestyle, how many niches are going to be left available? And I'm just like, literally, like pretty much about as many that were available about a decade ago because <laughs> people just aren't putting in the work or you know they're just not staying consistent and persistent in what they're doing but you know honestly it's just like it's just so much and then new niches are becoming available all the time too as well like I have a buddy of mine I was in a mastermind group with and he took advantage of a, a newer product that entered the marketplace and like he was crushing it like you know eight twelve thousand dollars a month consistently in sales so yeah, you can take advantage of like the waves of the new products and just well, ride it. A lot of it is actually not even just that because yeah, I definitely agree there's new stuff coming out all the time. But also, websites are getting outdated and old. Mm. So there's a bunch of websites that were built before they were mobile responsive. Absolutely. Like even just three years ago. <laughs> and if you can just find a site that is, that is selling whatever you're selling but isn't mobile responsive, you can just take over 50% of their sales that they're missing out on because they're not even, you know, either they're not converting on mobile or they're not even showing up on, on ads, things like that. So yeah, there, there's, there, there's, there's so much opportunity. Yeah, no, I've seen that too. Like where you're like doing niche research and then like, it's just like this really old, terrible website. And then like, you even ask yourself like, cause you'll go to Alexa.com and like see how the numbers are doing. And like, how are they even making sales? Like their website sucks. I mean, to be honest, man, <laughs> as, as someone who had one of those sites, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that was actually one of the reasons why I sold my site is because it wasn't mobile responsive. And I was like, ah, man, I don't want to do the work of redoing this all. Let me just sell this, take a break, and then just start a new store. Yeah. Uh, that store, now he's changed to mobile responsive theme, mm -hmm. and his sales have gone up by 30%. Wow. Like, just from doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure he's, he's also doing other work because he's a smart guy and he's putting in the effort. Mm -hmm. But th and that's, you know, that's another reason why he bought the site was because he's like, you know what? Instead of me waiting 27 months to get my money back, let me do make these tweaks. Let me get my money back in 15 months and all that will be profit. Yeah, no, that's that's an amazing thought process. So, yeah, definitely looking at like areas of opportunity within like a niche, like where you see multiple stores that are still just like old and outdated or they're just like, you know, something that looks from like the early 90s. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's this is something I could definitely hop into and create some opportunity. I like it. So uh, if people will, like how does actually the coaching work? So. Is, do they do they sign up for that like when they first sign up for Anton's course or is it like can they sign up afterwards? So there's uh two different options. I know Anton uh he's put together a mentorship package that people can actually sign up for. So you got that option, um, you know, signing up on the front end. But um if you're already part of the dropship lifestyle course, you can sign up uh for like a thirty day uh coaching package where it comes with like four thirty minute sessions. Um and pretty much like you'll get access to a private coaching form where uh, you'll be able to like post questions privately to like the coaches. And then also uh, you'll get access to the coaching calendar. So you'll be able to pull up all our different profiles and then see who's who matches best based on where you're at in the process. Cause we all got different strengths and um, you know, different areas of like the entire process. Like somebody might be better at, you know, uh, traffic and someone else might be better at, you know, niche selection or things of that nature. So you'll be able to see everyone's profile you know, read who's going to work best for you, then book a coaching call um, based off of like your time zone and then the available time zone of the individual that you want to book with. And then pretty much like you'll get a notification, they'll get a notification and it's game time. Easy. <laughs> Matt, like honestly, this is so much easier than, than when I started. I, I think so, someone asked me recently, they're like, they're like, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, I wish I signed up when, when you did. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> it's so much easier right now. Like, dude, it's so hilarious. Like, I've actually talked to tons of students that actually literally signed up when you signed up that haven't done anything. They're just like, you know what? Like, I, I literally too much got work a, back then. <laughs> I got a message from someone from like the UK, and they were just like, "Hey, Ernest, you know, um, you know, he was asking me some questions, and one of my questions whenever I get a message, is just like, hey, are you already part of the program?" He was just like, "Yeah, I signed up like right when Johnny signed up," and I'm just like, "All right, so you know, kind of, what are you doing?" He's just like, "I haven't done it. I still haven't picked a niche yet." And I'm just like. What have you been doing the last couple of years? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so I think we're going to go all and get some food. Uh, if you guys are still on the fence, like seriously, j just sign up. If you want to use my link, it's antonmethod.com. 
I get credit for referring you. I get to send you a free bonus that kind of helps you. It's kind of like my my version of coaching you through like this selection and supplier approval, but it's all pre-recorded. I can show you my screen. That way, I don't have to explain it a hundred times, and <laughs> that way, I can actually like do a better job explaining it. Because then you can actually just watch my screen as, as I do it. Um, and then, if you want to sign up for coaching packages, you can do it when you sign up by picking one of the packages, like the mentorship package, or the done for you package. And then, if you want to hit up Ernest, um, you know, and have him kind of walk you through all the pretty much whatever steps you need, you can you can get it from there. So I honestly think it's it, it's it's never been easier. Uh, there's literally a hundred people here in person right now in Hawaii who are part of the program, and a ton of people I've I've, I've met are crushing it. There's one guy that his freaking uh, Shopify notification keeps going off. Like yeah. it, it seems like while, while like literally while we're in like you know we're hanging out and having uh, lunch, I hear like someone's phone yeah. making that Shopify notification sound like probably every like twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. We got we got a lot of heavy hitters here. It's just like the event sold out. Like it sold out like extremely fast. Like it was like people that was like clawing and scratching to try to even get a ticket to even get here, and it just sold out. And we got a lot of people that are just doing extremely well. Like people, you know, that we had a gentleman just recently, um, you know, in our group just launched a store like six months ago, hit six figures already. So to be able to hang out with people like Johnny, hang out with people like that, um, you know, hang out with a ton of people that at a high level. Um, it like it's a once once in a lifetime opportunity. So I know Anton he'll be actually updating the course here pretty soon. So uh, like Johnny said, it, it'll be the best decision that you ever made. You know, willing to, as long as you're willing to put the work in, it, it's literally no like Anton's put put the program together now. This like you can't even make an excuse even if you wanted to. Like th- we got a full team of coaches. Everybody's crushing it. You got access to a private Facebook group. You got access to a private forum, and you got access to people that are doing like multiple six figures a year and literally like everyone's like when you get access to it like hands down like you can you can feel how awesome the environment is it is you'll you'll probably never find another environment online where you see so many people winning at a high level that are willing to help you win yeah and and honestly i think this is why i promote it so much i talk about it so much because i know it works and i know how much freaking bullcrap there is out there mm-hmm. that people they don't give a fuck about you or they try to upsell you like a five thousand dollar <laughs> coaching package afterwards instead of just something that like is actually doable you know so i think it's almost like our responsibility to like a, it's like a moral imperative you know yeah. for us to be like you know what this is an option you know that's, you know if you're happy at your corporate job you know and you know just keep keep doing that you know but then you probably not listen to this podcast <laughs> you're know, you probably not dreaming about coming out to hawaii <laughs> you're probably not man like being able to be here in hawaii and you know you know even like while i've been here you know making money in sales and like johnny i know you're probably making a ton of money in sales and it's just like you know being able to build a business like you know again that you know creates extra options for you and just brings in you know additional revenue for you like so whatever like your income goal is whatever your like you know personal goal is like whatever that you want for you you can literally achieve through this business model yeah i like it so next year i hope to see you guys out at the 2017 dropship lifestyle retreat wherever that's going to be in the world it's always going to be somewhere cool <laughs> um t- today we just went on this historical tour of the island of kona had some kona coffee which is amazing yeah it was awesome uh yeah. tomorrow i think we're gonna go we have a catamaran that uh, anton chartered chartered and we're gonna go snorkeling so that's gonna be sick yeah no it's gonna be insane like pretty much like a super duper awesome boat party yeah so <laughs> just an, oh uh, last time we had a luau and that clue a pig that they uh, buried under the oh under yeah. the, under the rocks. Oh, that was good. Yeah, no, we had yeah we had an awesome event yesterday. Where they were like spinning fire and dancing, and they had this big, huge, just like awesome like buffet of like different Hawaiian food and everything. It was it was awesome. It was hula it was, dancers and bikinis. Yeah, it was real deal. Like I'm telling you guys, man, whatever you guys got to do, like you know, to find a way to get access to the course because that's another thing too. Like some people just like you know. 
they're taking a look at it. They don't know where they're at in the process. Like literally, just sign up and like you can definitely make it happen. And like it, it is, it's just so amazing. And like, even more importantly, if you guys have already signed up and you're just still sitting in your ass, oh my gosh! <laughs> no, like seriously, no more excuses. <laughs> no, no more excuses. Like you got access to all the resources. Like with the coaching program, like you guys that are already part of it, like you guys see the success rate. Right? You see people winning. Like there's no excuse like why you really can't win other than the fact of the will to want to win. All right. And I hope we're all winners on this podcast. And I know every, literally every single person I've met out of the hundred people here, uh, they're, they're all winners. So, yep. you know, and I know if you're listening to this and, you know, you're not making excuses, you're not watching um, <laughs> Real Housewives <laughs> <laughs> or any other crap. You then, already know, man. Anybody you know. listening to your podcast, Johnny, is definitely somebody that's a winner. Yeah. I, I, I personally, like, I, I know the quality of people that, you know, listen to this. Like, you got everything that, that it takes to win. You got everything that it takes to succeed. And I know you're just looking for the right vehicle, right opportunity. And uh, it's never been a better time right now to take advantage of what we have access to. So definitely, you know, use Johnny's link. Go sign up if you aren't, aren't signed up. And if you are, and you need some assistance. Like, you know, you got myself on the coaching staff, tons of tons of coaches to be able to help you through the process. I appreciate that, man. Uh, any other way to, to keep in touch with you? Yeah, um, I actually got a site. Um, it's earnestepps.com. It's E-A-R-N-E-S-T-E-P-P-S.com. Uh, I'll have a blog rolling out here pretty soon. Uh, also, you know, on Facebook, it's my first and last name, too, E-A-R-N-E-S-T-E-P-P-S. So hit me up on Facebook. I'll have my uh, blog and everything rolling out and, you know, keep you guys updated. I like it. And we'll make sure we have links to that in the show notes. This is episode 134. Also, I'll have a link to AntonMethod.com which is my link uh, if you want to join the Joshua Lifestyle. Thank you guys so much for, for listening and also for all the five-star reviews you guys have been li- leaving on iTunes. This is definitely the best way to spread the word, to get, you know, basically get more people traveling and being their own boss. So I appreciate that, and I'll see all you guys next week. Peace out. Thank you for listening to the Travel Like a Boss podcast. If you want to hear more, including the bonus, how to choose the perfect niche episode, join our mailing list at travellikeabosspodcast.com. See you next week. And remember, if you want to travel like a boss, you need to be your own boss. So start your online business today and start living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of.